All right, so now we got a bit of a teeth separation going on here. Okay, so next what we're going to do is the top part of the hammer. Now you'll see this in some hammers, but some are just round at the top. But if we inset this here by selecting face and then clicking on the inset settings box on the right hand side, we get a few more options and we can adjust the amount of the uh, inset of this face. So we're going to bring it in a little bit, hit OK, and then we're going to extrude it. But this time instead of going up, we're actually going to sync it into the model. All right, and that will take care of the top part of the hammer. So next we're going to work on is the front part of the hammer. And it's the same with the teeth, but this time we don't need two faces. We only need one. So we'll extrude this out. We'll use our side view as a reference to see where we want the hammer to stop. And I would say right about here. Go to edge mode. We'll select around the edges that run lengthwise of the headpiece there. And we'll click connect settings. So I think 4 is going to work fine for this as well. Um, if we do need more, we can always add some in. I'm going to go to vertex mode, just like we did with the back part here. And we're going to start sculpting out the headpiece. So I'm going to select the first row, and I'm going to scale it down. R is the hotkey for, scale, or for scaling. And I'm going to do the same with the second row. And I'll also grab the very last row, scale it down, and pull it in. So now we've got a bit of the hammer piece there. All right, so that is the rough shape of our hammer, but it's very blocky, very game looking. So at this point, what we can do is start adding in some edges. So what I'm going to do is open up Photoshop and just show a quick demonstration of how smoothing is going to work on this model. Okay, so when we choose to smooth our model out in 3D Studio Max, what's going to happen is 3D Studio Max is going to divide every square with a line down the center and across the middle so that instead of having one face we'll now have four and iterations is the amount of times it keeps dividing up those squares but what's going to happen uh, if you want to try and keep your object holding its shape is let's say this is one edge of a vertice and we have another one here and another one there much like well we'll make a square here all right so what's going to happen is 3d studio max is going to be told to subdivide that so what will happen is it will go from this piece, instead of going straight across, what it's going to do is round itself out. So it's going to try and find the average between that vertice and this vertice. And we'll get this round edge. Uh, in this case, since we keep, we never really come to any of the vertices, we're going to keep kind of forming that all the way around. 3D Studio Max is going to kind of give us this shape. It'll never actually touch the vertices, so this area right here in the middle is what we'll get from a square. Get a perfect sphere. Okay, so keep that in mind when we're working away at uh, trying to set up some topology so that we can hold our shape. So we're going to go back into 3D Studio Max, and we're going to add on a modifier on top of this hammer called Turbo Smooth. So just click on this drop-down box here. You can hit T to cycle down to the T section really quick. Just scroll down to Turbo Smooth, and we're going to leave our iterations at one. The more iterations you have, or the more polygons you have, the slower your computer is going to work. But we only need one for now. So right off the bat, we take a look at a hammer. It's very clay-like. It's not really holding its shape anymore. So what we're going to do is start adding in some topology to kind of hold that shape a bit more. So if we go back down to the bottom of our stack and click on Editable Poly, you'll see that well now we can't really see what the end result will be. So if you come over here and you click on show end result on slash off toggle, you can now see the final result of your model, but you can still work in on your polygon model at the bottom. So let's start from the bottom up. So we have a bit of an issue here, it's rounding at the bottom. We want this to be somewhat flat. So we're gonna open up the stack there for editable poly and click on edge. Again you can click at any of these selection modes to cycle through what selection you want. We're going to go with Edge, click and drag around the bottom, and we're going to click Connect. Alright, so we don't need four steps. It's kind of holding on to the history from where we worked on the front of the hammer and the back of the hammer. We're just going to lower this back down to one, and we're going to slide this down to the bottom of the hammer. As you can see, as I get closer to the bottom, the tighter... 
like these edges again, the more it holds the shape of the hammer. All right. We also have the option too of insetting the bottom face as well, and we're going to do that just to kind of give this a, a sharper edge. So we'll click on the bottom face, and we're going to click inset, and we'll just adjust this amount so it holds really tight to the side. Okay, we'll just click off that, hit F4, and now you can see that the bottom of the hammer is holding its shape quite well. All right, so I do like the middle section being round, kind of gives that style to it. However, right here at the top, we want to pretend like the plastic sleeve ends right here. So what we need to do is go into edge mode, and I think what we'll do is we're going to select this edge here, this row of edges that run around the outside, and we're hit connect, and we're going to slide them up the other way, so it's really close to that side. And then we'll also grab this side here. We might run into a little bit of a problem because we're not dealing with four-sided faces on the side. We're actually dealing with uh, three triangles. So what we'll do is we'll just connect it for now and we'll clean up that topology here in a second. So we'll hit connect. And we're going to slide that all the way, or keep it all the way down here at the bottom. In fact, actually a better tool for this will be our quick slice tool. So what we'll do is we'll go into our side view. And right here is where we want the edges to be uh, cut. We're going to scroll down and find Quick Slice. What Quick Slice does is it will just literally slice it like a razor blade right through your model. So what we're going to want to do is click from here and we're going to go right to about here. But you can see what's happening is actually slicing the uh, the edge too where the back of the, right over here, right where the, the back comes down. But that's okay in this instance because we actually want to uh, bring that down there to hold a tighter shape as well. So we're going to leave it like that hit OK, click, All right, and we're actually going to just pull these vertices into where they belong down at the bottom. Let's sculpt this in here. Same with this one. It's down right near the bottom, kind of hold the shape. Perfect. All right, and to also give that bit of a look that the sleeve is actually thicker on the bottom and it so it has some thickness to it. We're just going to select these bottom row of vertices here and just scale them up and bring them up a little higher. All right, and that gives it a bit of a look that there's a sleeve going on there. All right, but we still have this issue of the topology all be in triangles at this point. So what I'm going to go do is come back down to our editor palette and just turn off that show end result. This will allow me to see what's going on right here with the topology flow. So we don't want to have another row of triangles right here at the bottom. So what we need to do is take tell this vertice to snap over to here or merge it into this vertice here. And same goes with the other side. So what you can do is you can use a tool called target weld. So it's over here in your menu on the right hand side. Click Target Weld, click one in vertice, and click to the side. Now snap it over to that corner, and same with this one. Click, and then click the vertice you want it to go to. So let's just inspect the outside here to make sure it's all clean. And it looks like we're good. So we can hit Q, which is the hotkey to go back to your selection mode, but it also turns off any tool that you have activated. And then we can just turn on Show End Result on and off toggle. And at this point, you'll see that it's much cleaner at the back there. All right, so let's move our way back up here. We have the top of the hammer that we have to work with. So what we'll do is we'll select by polygon, and we'll select that top face that we inserted. I'm just going to turn off show end results so we can kind of see this from a different perspective now. So what we need to do is get it so that this face insets a little bit so that it can kind of hold its form on the inside. So we're going to click Inset, and F4 to see our wireframe. Just going to scale this out so it's nice and close to the edge. And we're going to want to do the exact same for the outside here. So we're, instead of going around and selecting each edge like this, what you can do is use a selection tool called Ring or Loop. In this case, I believe we want Ring. And it'll go along the whole outside and select every edge for us. And then hit Connect. 
we want two segments because we want it to be at the bottom and near the top. Uh, we're not going to want any sliding this time, but we're going to actually want some pinching. So I'm going to pinch it so that one goes to the top and one goes down to the bottom. And that will help it hold its shape. I simply deselected them. Just control Z to undo and hit OK. Alright, so we're doing well at that point. Um, we're also going to want it to hold its shape around the top as well a little better. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw in the topology that allows it to inset this whole section for us. So we're going to make sure we're still in edge mode. Go down to cut. And we're just going to click right here on the outside of this rim here. We're just going to draw our way around. All right, now a little tip here is if I can't move the camera anymore like that. See, if I move the camera, I now have to come back and click on that vertice and then, and then I can start going. But in this case where I want to come down here, but the edge of the camera is, or the stage is here, what you can do is move your mouse wherever you want and hit I. And what the program will do is center up its stage based on where the mouse is on that screen. So it's a little useful tip. Again, I'm going to hit I. To, didn't seem to be working that time. Try that again. Oh, I was hitting O. Click here. I to come back to the beginning. Alright, so by using the cut tool, we're able to define the topology the way we see fit. Alright, we're going to have to do the same thing here at the front with these two edges. So we'll click this edge. Again, we'll use a selection modify tool like loop, or actually, in this case, it's ring. Alright, and we'll hit connect. We'll just adjust that slide so it's nice and tight to the side. And I think in this case, I want to do the same thing for the front row here as well. I'm going to select that, hit ring, and hit connect again. Alright. So at this point, let's go ahead and turn back on our show end result to see what we came up with. Alright, so now you can see the hammer has really held its shape much better. I kind of like uh, this style here, how the teeth are a little bit more rounded, not so hard looking. Uh, you could go through, let's go back in here, you could go through and add in some topology starting from this corner, working its way around the teeth and back up. And same with the inside, going around to the bottom, work its way back up to the corner. And that would give it a sharp edge, just like we've been doing everywhere else on the model. But in this case, I'm going to leave them round like that because I prefer that look. All right, and we're just going to add up our iterations by two just to kind of hold its shape a little better and have a bit of a more conformed look to it. So at this point, you have a, a very stylized hammer. You could simply take this to the next step by adding in some eyes. Drag in a new sphere, put it sphere where the eye would be. Really help. So we got the nose, we got the eyes, we could add in a bit of a mouth down here, or we could model it right into the, the hammer itself. But the sky's the limit in 3D. You can do whatever you want. So, Anyways, we'll come back in a future tutorial and we'll go on about how to uh, texture this up real quick, maybe take them to the, another level. Anyways, I hope everyone uh, enjoyed that tutorial. Again, it's the very first tutorial I've ever learned. I learned it over at digitaltutors.com. So I did a quick search on the uh, Digital Tutors website here for that tutorial, but unfortunately the website's gone through lots of changes over the years and I uh, can't find any more. However, it looks like they have new tutorials on how to make uh, next generation style hammers for video games, stuff like that. So I really uh, recommend Digital Tutors. They're home to thousands and thousands of training kits. Uh, and video tutorials, many of them which are free, and, um, and they never steered me wrong, so I would recommend them to anyone. Alright, so I hope everyone enjoyed this tutorial at, at alimino.com. Uh, please check back frequently as we're going to be updating uh, on a weekly basis.